Hey guys, welcome back to GarageBand and beyond. Today we're going to be talking about how to get your real audio loops to be perfect when you get them to that loop point. And so you don't hear that little hiccup, that little blah, blah, whatever sound you hear where that loop is starting over again. If the loop is imperfect, there are things you can do to really clean it up and make it absolutely you know, inaudible. You'll never hear it. Okay. So we're going to be looking at this little, uh, 16 bars right here, which ended up being the guitar part for the entire song. This thing right here, that's highlighted. Um, so let's just listen to it. It's the same thing for 16 bars. I'll just play a few. So it's that thing over and over, but he wanted that to be basically the entire song minus a bridge. Um, so anyway, so what I had to do is, you know, cut it apart, make it loop and make it work well. Thankfully, this guy played to a click track and played extremely precisely. So this is super simple and probably not. It doesn't have the world's worst like hiccup uh, at the loop point, but there is a little something and I can still show you the concept of what I'm talking about. So anyway, so what I like to do when I um, am looping, like especially here, I have 16 bars of recorded music to choose from which of these and they're in four bar segments. OK, um, so if you count it like. Um, like this, you know, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, right? So it's boom, right? So there, so every four bars of music, the, the phrase loops back around. So what we're looking for is where to start. So as you can see at the beginning of this recording down here, if you look at it, let's expand it a little bit. Um, if you look at it, you can see that the beginning isn't going to work because, you know, it's just so much lower than the rest of the part. So we have to find something more internal. So we're going to grab it right here at the beginning of the fifth bar. And we are just going to do a simple command T and we're going to cut it. Okay. Now, the other thing that I like to do, especially here where I have 16 bars of music to choose from, I will try to use as much of that as I can. Now, yeah, I could just choose four bars and loop that over and over. But since I'm staring at like an additional 12 bars that I can use, I would definitely recommend you do that because what happens is when you just choose four bars and you loop that over and over and over, after time, your brain really does start to go, oh, that's just a, a simple loop. And I can hear that it's the same exact thing over and over. The loop becomes much more obvious. So the more of a segment that you can choose to loop, the better. OK, so in this case, I'm actually going to choose all 12 bars. Right. Um, so you can see from six to 18, I'm going to use all of these. This is actually the last strike of the guitar, but it's nice and consistent throughout. So what I'm going to do is here and I'll let you just let you listen to it um the last four bars here right okay so obviously we don't want this last one because there's a, a sort of a strummy thing so we're going to cut this all the way back to here and then i'm going to go up to the upper right hand corner of the audio field and i'm going to get the loop tool off and i'm going to stretch it left <laughs> loop tool on sorry and i'm going to stretch it to the left here and that's also to the right Ugh, it's early for me um anyway so <laughs> i'm going to stretch it to the right okay and actually that loop <laughs> i got it perfect okay and i i do hear the very beginning of that strum okay and we can actually see it down here if we look it's right here you see this this little blue blob of volume let's go over here and look at it okay so this is what i'm talking about so you can see here's the loop point right but this piece of audio is something we do not want okay it's not the most obvious thing but trust me I hear it. I can definitely hear that thumb, uh, you know, starting the strumming thing there. All right. So this is super easy. We're going to go back. We're actually going to bring the loop all the way back here. And we're going to come to the end of this field here. Let's just do this. Okay. Right there. Okay. So this is what we don't want. Right. 
So this is where the flex tool comes in. Okay, so we're going to expand this as much as possible. And we are going to turn on if, if you don't already have it on this guy right here, this turns on your flex editing. So this we're going to just hit it with a bar here. And we're going to actually just shove it all oops, not that much forward, we're going to shove it all the way forward. So we're basically just going to see these this wave right there, that guy, we're going to try to squish that down. And we're going to extend it past the edit point, okay, because we're trying to get rid of it. So now let's listen to this. Okay, good. So it's there, but it's past the point. Now, now, I'm going to cut it out, right? I'm going to recut this loop. And you can't tell how little I'm cutting until I expand it. But this is right here, you can see how much I'm actually cutting. So it's a very, very tiny, tiny little cut. Um, so let's go back and cut it. All right. So another command T will cut it, bam, I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to pull again with the loop tool. And I'm going to take a look at it. Okay, that looks way better. Okay, see how there's nothing. Let's listen to it now. Perfect. See? And that's it, you guys. Um, super easy thing to do. And really, the fine point of this is using the flex time editor, right? So when you're in here, when you're down here in the editor window, you're just looking for the musical events that you're really just trying to get rid of. So like I said there, you know, I, I found that piece that I didn't want, I shoved it past the edit point, and then I cut it out and got rid of it. And then the loop became absolutely spotless. And uh, let's just listen to that again, just so you can hear it. Right? Great. That's pretty much perfect. I think there, I could probably go in and, and uh, fix one little thing about where the loop starts. Um, let's take a look at that. No, it looks okay. See, now this is one of those things like I could hear that there's a little beat missing from the top. Let's see if we can change anything with that or if I'm just going to mess up my video. Okay, no. Actually, it looks okay. So I can probably just pull that guy just a touch back off of the line just to see if, let's see if what happened here. Perfect. It got rid of that little empty space. Did you hear that? So again, you know, you're going to be looking at the beginning of the loop, the ending of the loop, and you're just going to be using that flex editor to get rid of the, the junk that you don't need at the loop point. And that's pretty much it. You can pull them past that loop point, cut it out, and then hit the loop thing. Easy peasy, you guys. Super easy getting real audio loops to be perfect and seamless. Um, flex editor. That's it. Precise playing, in time playing, flex editor and just a good set of ears listening and looking for the little details. Uh, and that's it, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget, new videos coming out Tuesdays and Fridays now. We're doing Guitar Tuesdays, which has been super fun so far. Um, although I did break my phone on Tuesday, but I got it fixed. <laughs> um, thank God I got it fixed. Anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Check out all these other videos that I have here. Um, you know, if you're interested in like microphone reviews, you can check out whatever video is popping up around me. And uh, I have all sorts of videos. My wife has a really awesome cooking channel. If you want to check that out, Real Italian Kitchen. That's the little circle with my wife's face in it. <laughs> check that stuff out. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Peace.